Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and uh, to another video. So I get asked this question all the time and uh, that is what should you be paying for a new wristwatch? Um, a lot of you guys have reached out to me, even friends of mine that don't even know I have a channel and they're asking me, hey, uh, you know, what are the best watches to buy new and what kind of a deal can I get on a new watch? You know, what's a fair price? And a lot of people I know are actually buying watches brand new and paying full retail. And I just wanted to make a video about that and share my thoughts because I think that's a terrible idea. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of my feedback. And as always, feel free to disagree. But since you guys ask, here's my thoughts on it. Um, we're doing a video vlog today. Again, forgive me for these videos. Hopefully you don't mind. My travel schedule is ridiculous. I, this is like the one time a week I have any time and it's me driving back and forth from the airport. So sorry about that. But anyway, so I've had several people reach out to me and again, they're looking to buy the first luxury watch or actually some of you guys are buying, you know, you're well into your luxury watch, period. And you're looking at buying something from the big tier brands. Uh, I don't hear too much about Talk Warrior, but definitely Breitling, Omega, and Rolex. And I just wanted to say right now, you guys should not be paying retail for any of these watches. And on some, uh, especially Breitling and Omega 2, you guys should be asking for substantial discounts off of new. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, and I would say that's for watches that are currently overvalued given their, their list price versus what they sell in the market. But those watches are rare. So like a Rolex Deep Sea, you know, Deep Blue, there was a period, and depending on who you look at, they're still slightly overvalued compared to list price, but now they've actually, you can find plenty of deals online now for less than list. But there was a while, it was cheaper to buy one new than to buy one used. And as always, you know, the Rolex Daytona, especially the ceramic, those are in a weird situation where they're worth more now than they are at list price. But those aside, if you can buy one of those at list price, hey, good for you, that's a good investment for a short term period. But otherwise you guys should, if you're gonna buy new, which I don't recommend, uh, I would always recommend you guys go pre-owned from a dealer that is uh, certified in that, that type of watch and will give you a warranty uh, and that has a good pedigree because you guys will save a lot of money. But if you're going to buy a new, you need to ask for a lot of money off because the difference between the resale and wholesale prices on watches is monumental. You know, a watch is, you know, not unlike a lot of things in life, like a car, for example, that once you buy it or you drive it off the dealership lot, as it would be with a car, it's worth substantially less than you paid for it. And just to give you guys a couple examples, you know, there's a lot of Breitlings out there, you know, some of the Chronomats, some of the, the Blackbird series, and especially the Navitimers that you know, new, the list price on those things is eight, $9,000 for a stainless steel watch. But you go to look at one, do you go to sell it to a dealer? Um, you'll be lucky if you get paid four grand for one. And I've seen a couple, you know, like six month old Navitime or B-series movements and also Chronomats that listed for, you know, 8,500, $9,000 ish as the time I'm making this video. And I watched them sell on eBay into private sellers for like 3,500, $3,600, $3,700. So, if you guys have just bought one of those at retail, you just lost 50%. And uh, in layman's terms, you lost probably four grand, which, you know, in a couple months' time, that's massive depreciation. Even a new car isn't likely to depreciate that quickly in you know, the first couple months. But, uh, you know, there's plenty of good deals to be had out there, and you should be willing to bargain on these watches. And especially watches like Breitling and Omega, because they're not selling at the retail price anyway. Panerai, I would say too, except for the rare ones, is also in this thing. And a lot of it is is that the prices don't aren't justified by the market. And I'm gonna go off on kind of why I think that is, and you guys are welcome to disagree, and actually I encourage you guys to share your feedback with me. Um, but you know, one of the things that I've always been an advocate on this channel is that I support in-house movements. I think having in-house movements are great. And you know, late 2000s-ish, you know, the whole swatch deal, Etta was gonna start pulling back on uh, supplying their Etta Bosch movements. And a lot of manufacturers, you know, started pushing to go in-house, Breitling, even Omega, which is part of the Swatch group. And as part of this, they had to build a whole bunch of new machinery, they had to do a whole bunch of new engineering, they had to hire a whole bunch of staff, and they had to put a lot more costs into their watches than they were previously. And obviously, if a watch is costing you more money to make, you're gonna, A, need to make up that money, so you're gonna have to ask more money anyway. But B, you know, marketing, and I used to be in marketing, uh, you're gonna consider that extra value and you're gonna to wanna to charge people uh, for that perceived extra value. And I'm one of those people who would pay all day more money for an in-house movement than I would a, you know, generic movement, um, more than likely. So the prices kept going up. However, I would argue that the prices went up more than the market was willing to justify. And the way that I say that, is to me, the gray market dealers online are the ones that are really setting what the accurate price is. So, 
you know, it's one of those things that the, uh, the market dictates what the final price should be. And, you know, Omega, Breitling, what have you, they can ask, you know, what is it, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars for a watch, but if nobody's buying them at retail and they're sitting on the shelves, these, these big dealers are going to give them off to gray market dealers at their price, and the gray market dealers are going to sell them for what the market's actually going to be able to support. So, you know, that Omega may have an $8,900 price tag on it, or even in the case of that Omega, you know, moon watch that I did, the ceramic one, the dark side of the moon, that watch had a $15,000 retail price on it, but you have to understand that that's not what it's selling for now, and if you want to go buy a one in mint condition, you're going to be paying half of that. And at that price, you know, I think it's an okay deal, but can you imagine if you were the person that paid retail for that watch, how upset you would be if you just shelled out $15,000 for a watch, and now it's worth half of what you paid for it. And there's actually ones that are even worse than that. So gold watches in particular, solid gold watches, tend to have massive depreciation. And if you go out and buy one of these solid gold pieces uh, from Rolex, you know, you might walk away, you know, paying 35, 40, 45, 50 thousand dollars, and you may want to go sell that onto a dealer, you know, a year from now, two years from now, and you'll be lucky if you can get 15 to 20 out of it. So right there, you've, you've basically erased the price of like a Honda Civic in the US in the matter of a year or two. I mean, granted, nobody buys these watches as a, a financial investment, nor should you, but there's better ways to spend your money, and to me, the money is best spent buying a pre-owned piece or doing heavy negotiations on the front side. And a lot of the two-tone watches too, especially the, uh, the Breitling two-tones too, those things have just awful, awful depreciation. And even Rolex, I mean, if you were to buy a Rolex watch, the best deals on Rolex watches are always gonna be the stainless steel sports pieces. For whatever reason, the market always seems to hold the value on those the best. And it's just one of those things that, you know, the market will always seem to justify, but the gold pieces, the two tones, and the solid gold ones, they lose a lot more of their money. And if you look at like a GMT Master II, a Submariner, you know, and you compare those, the, the two tone versus the solid gold versus the stainless steel, it's the stainless steel pieces that are always the ones that retain the majority of their value. And, you know, it's all, I'm going on percentage point here. So, you know, they're all going to lose money. But if you look at the percentage of value lost, the, the stainless steel pieces are going to hold the majority of their value. So, again, dealers out there, good dealers, know that the odds of them being able to sell a watch at list price to an educated buyer are slim to none. You know, we live in a world now where everybody has access to the internet. You guys can do your research. Anytime you guys are looking to buy a new watch, I know it's tempting. You go into a boutique, they put it on your wrist, and you're like, you fall in love with it, and you know, you want to make the purchase. But I would highly recommend you guys before you buy a new watch. And again, I would go pre-owned. But if you're going to buy new, you know, if you find a watch you love, go home, do some research, look on Chrono 24, look at sold listings on eBay, and try to get a sense of what the wholesale value of one of these watches is going to be. And then I would go back to that dealer prepared to see how close you can get them to a wholesale price. Now, no dealer is going to sell you a watch at wholesale. They would never do that. But I'd be asking for 25, 30% off um, on the majority of watches out there. Uh, Rolex, Patek Philippe, I would say the exceptions to that rule. But, you know, Breitling, Omega, Todd Hoyer, you know, Mont Blanc, Cartier, a lot of these other brands, you should be asking for money off. And uh, again, you know, Resale shouldn't be your first concern when buying a watch, but don't just throw your money out there. If you were to go buy a new car, you wouldn't go pay sticker price on a new car either, right? At least in the U.S., we're trained to go to the dealer. We're, we're trained to try to get money off of the sticker price. We're trained to try to get rid of the extra stuff for the fabric protection, the paint protection, all that. You're taught to go negotiate, but when it comes to jewelry, a lot of people just accept the list price, and that's not sound advice. So, you know, again, guys, you know, there are definitely perks to buying new, and if you're buying a rare watch like a Ceramic Daytona, you may actually end up slightly ahead, but most watches out there, you buy a watch, you can immediately erase 40, 50% of the value easily. And, you know, it's just one of those things. And some watches, even like a lot of the Omegas, like you say, like a Seamaster Planet Ocean, list price may be close to six. Whole, you know, wholesale from a, like a private dealer may be closer to like 3,200. And if you went to go trade it in, you might get 15, $1,600 for it. So, you know, knowledge is power. Knowledge is gonna save you money in the bank. So. Whatever you buy, do your research and negotiate a good deal. So just want to talk about this. Every time I hear somebody that paid full price retail for a new luxury watch, 
I feel sick inside because I know that they've left a lot of money on the table and I don't like to see that people, you know, <laughs> lost money on a deal that they could have been smart about. So there's my advice. If you guys have your own advice, or you disagree with me, as always, feel free to leave me a note in the comments below. Your feedback is always appreciated. This is just my perspective. Um, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Omega Seamaster uh, Bond watch. So uh, I know Roger Moore just passed away. I should be wearing a Seiko in his memory, but you know, I'm wearing the Pierce Brosnan watch. So as always, guys, thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for putting up with my car vlogs and uh, dealing with my, my crazy schedule right now where I'm basically, I'm traveling every week. So um, thank you for being patient. Thank you as always for watching. If you like what you saw here and you haven't already, please subscribe somewhere around my head. Somewhere there's a link around me. I don't know where it's gonna pop up and check the channel out. I'm sure there's a lot of videos up there that are gonna be related to questions or things you'd be interested in. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Take care.